In this video, I'll be reviewing this Dell XPS 8940 desktop. It has the following specifications. It has an Intel Core i5-11400 CPU, 8GB of RAM, 2TB mechanical hard drive, and the most important setting is that it has a GPU which is an NVIDIA GTX 1650 Super. I got this desktop on sale from Dell. It cost me 800 Canadian dollars only and for this price the specifications are really good. What I'll be covering in this video is the following. First I'm gonna show you the upgrade options of this desktop. So we're gonna open it up and take a look inside and I'm gonna tell you what you can do to upgrade it. Of course I invite you also to put in the comments below all the upgrade options that you might think about of this desktop and that I didn't cover. And I'll be also doing a gaming test on it. I'm gonna be using Fortnite and we're gonna see how many frames per second we can achieve with this game on this desktop. And also I will be doing a CPU benchmark on it using Cinebench. And this is important because these desktops are famous for overheating and I'm gonna see if it will overheat. And also I'll be doing a Fermark benchmark test to see how the graphics card performs on this benchmark. So let's start. So let's start by opening up the desktop to see what's inside. It has two screws here that you can unscrew with your hand, which is really very convenient. Once the screws are unscrewed, just pull the cover and remove it. And let me here zoom in a little bit so that you can see better. So this is a desktop from the inside. So for the upgrade options, I'm going to start first with the memory. You see here that it has four slots for the memory. So you can put four memory DIMMs in it. It can go up until 128 gigabyte of RAM, which is very good. And the slots are colored. So if you're going to put a pair, put it in the same color. So here I have one DIMM which is 8 gigabytes. If I want to add another 8 gigabytes, I should add it in the white slot because it is in the white slot here. The second thing I'm going to talk about is the hard drive. So here it has a mechanical hard drive. This is the 2 terabyte 3.5 inch hard drive. You can of course change it to a bigger one and also you can add another one here. And this is here the SSD slot. I already added an SSD in it, which is good in this desktop is that the cabling is here provided already. So all I had to do is to install the SSD here. It is very easy to install it. You just pinch these like this and you, you can remove it. You should of course remove the cables first. And you can install another SSD here. But in order for you to install it, you need like a cradle, which is not provided. And for the SATA connections on this PC, it has four SATA connections on the motherboard. Already three of these connections are occupied. One with a DVD drive, one with a mechanical hard drive that came with the PC, and one I used for the SSD that I installed. So you still have an empty one that you can install either a mechanical drive or another SSD here. And also for the drives, you can add an NVMe drive here. It supports the two phone factors of NVMe, M.2 2230 and M.2 .2 You can go up to two terabytes on the NVMe drive here. So this is for the drives. We talked about the RAM. Let's talk now about the CPU. You can also upgrade the CPU. Of course, to upgrade the CPU, you should get a CPU that is compatible with this motherboard, with this chipset. And for the RAM and CPU and the NVMe, I've made videos on how to upgrade them. You can look in the description. It will help you in the upgrade process if you want to upgrade them. And this is here, the GTX 1650 Super. So you can change it also. You can go up, I think, until 1660 Super because the power supply is only 360 watts. And as you see, it is a proprietary power supply. So it is very difficult to change it. Unless, of course, you buy one from Dell, which is very expensive. And here you have PCI slots also for the upgrade. So you can add PCI cards. 
and also to finish up with the upgrades you see here you have the wireless card you can change it but the one that comes with it is really very good so it supports dual bands 2.4 and 5 gigahertz and it has bluetooth also so that was it for the upgrade options please if you have any other upgrade ideas leave me in the comments below what are these ideas i appreciate it so now let's start the benchmarks on this pc and i'm gonna start with fortnite Fortnite performed really well on this PC. The frames per second were between 60 and 75, so the average was around 65-68 frames per second, which is very good. The CPU heated up a little bit. The CPU utilization was not too high, so it was not a bottleneck, but the temperature of the CPU reached 86 degrees. It's not very hot, it didn't go into thermal throttling, but nevertheless, it is a little bit high. And the GPU temperature the maximum I got was 74 degrees which is not too bad and the GPU utilization was around 80% I was playing the game at 1080p with a quality preset at high let's perform now the Cinebench test to see the score of the CPU and to see if it will overheat I ran the CPU multi-core test on Cinebench for 10 minutes during these 10 minutes the CPU usage was 100% and the maximum temperature that the CPU reached was 87 degrees. Now this is considered hot but this is considered in the acceptable limits of the temperature and the CPU didn't go into thermal throttling. So even though it was getting hot a little bit it wasn't overheating which is a very good thing. And the CPU score was 5612 which is really a very good result. Let me run now the Furmark benchmark. The Furmark benchmark tests the GPU performance and it will also stress the GPU so that we can see the maximum temperature that it will reach. So here I ran the Furmark benchmark for 5 minutes straight and the maximum temperature that the GPU reached was 81 degrees which is not too bad and the GPU was utilized approximately 97-98% all the time. But in this test also the CPU reached a peak of 88 degrees Celsius for a second and then it went back to around 84 degrees. The Fermark score for this GPU was 3425 which is a decent score and the average frames per second were 57. Overall the PC performed very well and the temperatures were contained even with the stock coolers. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, please share it, subscribe to my channel, and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you all for watching, and until next time.